we first met um, when you were on our alumni board um, at the University of Michigan and this would have been like 1991 or 1992 somewhere in there and I had just joined the faculty and I can remember you pulling me aside and you just had this big smile on your face and you <laughs> said you're gonna have a ball but what was it about your childhood experiences that do you think that that led you to this remarkable uh, I don't even want to say career it's almost like a, a life of, of adventure my uh... My folks took advantage of what Michigan had to offer. They especially liked hunting and fishing and the outdoors. Yeah. So it uh, just sort of came about naturally for me. Did you always know uh, that you would go to the University of Michigan? Was it something your family talked about that the daughters would go or? No, uh, uh, in Adrian, yeah. my hometown, yeah. uh, I lived just a half a block from Adrian College. Well, I sort of grew up right. expecting I'd go to college, but sort yeah. of just expecting I'd go right. to Adrian College. Exactly. The University of Michigan Alumni Association uh, offered uh, scholarships. Yes. It was just merely for tuition, yes. but, uh, but that was enough to get us started because yes. uh, uh, we figured we could earn our room and board and so on, but it's hard to believe that yeah. uh, the semester's tuition was $15. I was able to get an NYA job, the National Youth Administration, yeah. Roosevelt's, yeah. one of his yeah. projects, and uh, I worked mounting plants in the university oh. herbarium. How did you find geology as a major, or did it find you? When you, in those days, when you entered the University of Michigan, you had to choose oh, one social science, yeah. one science, and English, and a language. Right. And, uh, so I was studying the catalog, trying to decide what I would choose, and I was looking at the various sciences, and my mother said, well, if I were you, I'd take geology. <laughs> and <laughs> so I took geology. Anyhow, I hadn't been in uh, the geology course more than two weeks, and I knew yeah. that that, was, that it. was what I was interested in. It was easy to fall in love with it. Yeah. Was um, the being a, a woman in this era, um, the, there were there were not necessarily many jobs in the the industry jobs. Obviously, oil and gas, petroleum industry, uh, mining. So the traditional areas where one would get employment. Um, were you aware of that, either consciously or unconsciously, and and thought I'd better go the teaching route because of. Being a well, woman? I was, I was pretty much aware that, right. and uh, I realized that to really do anything, I'd have to have a, know a lot more than I was going to know. Idea was yeah. that I would yeah. get as much geology as I could, and then yeah. I'd earn money to go to graduate school. When did you make the decision, and what? brought you to the decision to pursue a PhD in geology? After I got my bachelor's degree, I taught one year, I taught at Blissfield High School, a little town near Adrian, and I taught for a year to get money. And while, during that year, uh, toward the end of the year, Pearl Harbor occurred. Yeah. And, uh, I had already decided that I wasn't uh, going to yeah. stay at Blissfield another oh, sure. year. But because of the uh, war, why uh, there weren't as many applicants, yeah. and uh, I was able to get lucky and get an assistantship. And uh, it was my idea right from the start that I wanted to go for the PhD. And, 
then I'd have a choice of what I wanted to do in geology. When I went back to Michigan, um, went back to graduate school, I uh, had a, a summer uh, job in, with Dr. L in Dr. Landis's office, yeah. sort of his assistant. Yeah. And uh, it was during that uh, time that he came up with the idea of having a special course to mm -hmm. uh, train girls to take over some of the geologic activities for the petroleum companies who were hurting because so many of the men had been drafted and exactly. gone to war. And uh, so I, I sort of like to set something straight that has uh, mentioned in some of the articles that have been written about the petroleum girls. Yeah. Uh, it was Professor Landis's idea and yeah. uh, he and the department worked yes. out the program and I had no never had any part of it except uh, listening to what was being thought or talked sure, about or sure. planned. Yeah. But I, I, I never was a part of the program and I never uh, specifically helped Professor Landis or yeah. the others in putting forth the program. The only time that I did help was out at Camp Davis. So when you went out to Camp Davis, were you d taking part in the course itself? Were you um, a student in that? I was just using it as a, more or less as a base from which to Absolutely. work. Absolutely, yeah. In, uh, in later years, uh, one year I was there as an instructor, but oh, that fantastic. was after I got my PhD. <laughs> the thing that I found that I enjoyed most in geology was mapping. My original thought uh, was that I would, uh, my best opportunity to do what I wanted to do was to uh, teach in the uh, winter and uh, in the summer go out in the field and have fun doing geology. What was your very first job right out of PhD? Where, what was that job? Uh, my first job was uh, teaching at Wellesley College in well, Wellesley, Massachusetts. Yep. And the next thing we know from your biography is that you are in the oddest of places. You are in Japan, immediate post-World War II, during the time of the American occupation with Douglas MacArthur there. Uh, I uh, got a letter from a young lady, Annabelle Brown, who had been one of the people that I knew from Camp Davis. Mm -hmm. She was a, a real ardent supporter of Camp Davis. She had joined the USGS after she had gotten out of school. Uh, and she says, I want to come back and get married. <laughs> My boss says, I can't go unless I find somebody to take my place. I th thought about it, but I was in the middle of the semester and I had a contract with Wellesley. Yeah. So one day I happened to mention it to Alice Douse, who was uh, teaching uh, Wellesley at that time. And she says, oh, you ought to go. You should yeah. take that. We all discussed it at Wellesley and finally I uh, told the survey I'd yeah. take the job. The purpose of the project right. was to map the former Japanese mandated islands. Okay. And that was to uh, an association with the Army Engineers. I uh, see. The Japanese, of course, had done a lot I of see. work there and the idea was to collect the yes. information that they yes. had and then translate it yes. and feed it to the field parties. I had only been in Japan uh, about two months, I guess, yeah. 
when the Fukui earthquake took yeah. place. Mm -hmm. So once this earthquake occurred, why, of course, yeah. we were involved. Of course. And uh, there were just two of us in the office at that time who uh, were really field geologists. Yeah. And we took down a couple of jeeps. Yeah. And uh, we just toured the area looking yeah. for faults, looking yeah. at the... Uh, uh, mapping uh, the ground disruption that yeah. we could observe and yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, another piece of good fortune was that uh, Miharayama yeah. uh, on the island of Oshima yeah. uh, decided to be active then yeah. Yeah. and uh, it was a place that was relatively easy to get to. Yes, yes. Even back in the United States, um, it, it wasn't very common to have a woman field geologist mm -hmm. um, at the USGS. But in terms of Japanese culture, and how did they um, react to you? They couldn't have been more cooperative. Yes. Uh, more accepting. Yes. Uh, they were. They were wonderful people, and they yes. gave us wonderful help but yeah. the one thing that happened was that uh, the fact that I was a woman uh, Im impressed them and they began to think a little bit about well maybe they had, could have some women geologists. While I was there they began to come up and the professors took great pride in pointing them out to me and yeah. say they had now yeah. some women yeah. uh, geology students and instead of being uh, you know objecting or being yeah. uh, bothered by it or anything they were yeah. eager to have some women geology students. How did it come about that you met the emperor? Well uh, part of it was through Kuno. Yes. Actually when Kuno uh, received uh, some of, uh, well, I think uh, no, two different times he received honors from the uh, emperor and yeah. Kuno invited me to go to the ceremony oh. and so on and introduced yeah. me to the oh. emperor. Tell us about your first posting back to the United States with the USGS. Yeah. I had just uh, finished uh, the mapping on Ishigaki Shima, uh -huh. uh, uh, the little island in the Ryukyu chain, and uh, so uh, we had gotten out. We'd finished the military geology reports yes. in Tokyo, so I had to write the professional paper. Yes, when I first came back to Washington, why yeah. I had a little. I had a desk yeah. and a dingy room in the yeah. old Washington Auditorium. Oh, wow. Was just yeah. their report writing. Right, right. And how long did that take you? Well, there were a few interruptions oh. that came along in between things to do, but yeah. I, was, I was probably working on it for about a year. Or I see. Off and on, anyhow. Well, when I had been back in Washington from yes. Japan, yes. thinking of, of the future, I had yeah. made some inquiries. Wow. Uh, well, I, I'd always been interested in uh, Alaska and Arctic and the Antarctic and yeah. uh, that area from yeah. time when I used to read about the old bird expeditions, of course, and yes. Larry Gould and everything, absolutely, I, uh, yep. I uh, part of the job of military geology there was to provide the maps yeah. that the army needed for the army winter maneuvers. Once we completed the maps and the work that was needed for the army why uh, we could work on yeah. just on the geology end yeah. of things so that resulted in uh, at that time like terry keith yeah uh, was my field assistant so yeah. we went to yeah. work and we 
got yeah. out a little publication then yeah. on the geology along the yeah. Taylor Highway. Yeah. We uh, didn't have any helicopter available and when we, there were places that we could often get by using mm -hmm. uh, either a float plane or a yeah. land on gravel bars. Yeah. So we landed on a uh, with uh, a Super Cub. Yeah. Uh, we had Marvin Warblow fly us onto the gravel bar. He took us one at a time in the yeah. Super Cub. And, yeah. Uh, we had our backpacking equipment. Yeah. And it was arranged that uh, we would, uh, I think we were going to be about a week. And then he was going to uh, meet us at another gravel yeah. bar further downstream. He let us out on the gravel bar and that was fine and it was okay for a day or so and then the weather changed mm -hmm. and uh, we got snow and rain and it was miserable. And uh, so our time was coming up to meet Marvin on this uh, gravel bar further down than the one that we had landed on before. Okay. That was snowing and yes. miserable and we were yeah. wet and cold yeah. and we got there. And of course, we'd never been to this gravel bar. Yes. And we found to our horror that yeah. it was out in the middle of the river. So we waded out to the gravel bar and we had decided that uh, there was no point in continuing field work sure. and we didn't want Marvin to drop us the supplies. Finally, we heard him overhead and it was snowing and oh. he came in and landed and we told him, we wanted to go out. He really hadn't intended to take us out because right. he was taking supplies out to some hunters. We started down the runway and I, I could tell we weren't gathering speed the way we should. Uh, yeah. Marvin kept trying to bounce us off and we yeah. finally came to the end of the bar and we <laughs> were still on the ground. Didn't quite stay in the air. Right. So we ended up at the end of the bar in the yeah. river. Wait. We sat there a couple minutes. I said to Marvin, I said, well, I guess we've had it. Marvin wow. said, I guess we have. <laughs> Anyhow, we then uh, just uh, waded ashore and unloaded right. the plane and yeah. put, put all the gear ashore. Marvin had built a big fire on shore there. It was late in the afternoon now. It was yeah. getting toward dark. And, uh, yeah. I thought we should stay by the sure. fire and start right. out early. Sure. Soon as daylight in the morning. Right. But Marvin wanted to get going. Yeah. How many days did you think this would take you? I figured we could get out in two days. Two days, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we didn't get very far and we yeah. ended up in a gully that night and yeah. as it continued to rain, the gully yeah. got wetter. Right. <laughs> but we sat there during the night and yeah. uh, daylight while we sure. started and we uh, followed some caribou trails yeah. and it was snowing. The higher we got, the more snow there was. And the wind was blowing and it was pretty miserable but yeah. we finally got to the top of the ridge and the wind was blowing like mad and I had yeah. Joe trying to help hold the map right. so that I could see because I wanted to go down the ridge in a, right. a particular place right. because I wanted to hit a mining camp that yeah. I knew was down there. I, we got down the ridge and picked up a trail that yeah. went to the mining camp. And as I expected, it was closed tighter than a drum. And there was one little tiny cabin and it was really tiny and it had a stove yeah. and a bunk. Right. And a chair. Yeah. 
and that was it. Yeah. It, was, it had the, had this yeah. bunk along the wall. Right. And uh, so we uh, found a can, of, I think it was a can of Spam and yeah. a couple cans of something, and we heated those over yeah. the stove and yeah. uh, had those. And uh, at daylight, why, yeah. uh, we got up and Marvin yeah. put the pane back yeah. in the window and yeah. uh, we yeah. started out again. We made it on into chicken and, yep. and then uh, walked down to the yeah. chicken airstrip and, right. uh, and a flotilla came in to pick us up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How, what a, what enormous, uh, Fun you've had, how how fulfilling your your life's work has been for you, and and so what I'm wondering is, we all of us want that. Um, uh, we would love to have a career, and we just love what you're doing every day. Do you have um, advice for students today, both the grad students but also the undergraduates who are at that think back to that stage of life, and what advice do you have to them so that they have a shot at a career as rich and wonderful as yours? Just uh, aim in a general way for the things that you like to do and want to do and love to do. And I don't, don't try to uh, plan your life in every detail. Be ready to take advantage of things as they come along. Exactly. And and uh, you, you have to uh, recognize opportunities and act upon them. I've been lucky in that I've had wonderful people to work with and uh, who, went, uh, who went along and took the hardships with you right, and right. Uh, often steered me in a better direction. And yeah. It, uh, uh, I, I oh, uh, a lot happened well yeah. because of how yeah. other people right. helped me make it go that way. And I'm I sure had some wonderful field assistants that yeah. just... Uh, and they speak of you as being such an important mentor to them. So, I mean, they, they feel lucky because they had you. So, Helen, I just want to thank you so much for sitting here answering all these questions, sharing with us um, just what has been such an inspiring story of your, of your life, really. It is my great honor um, on behalf of the entire department, not just of the department today, but over the last many, many, many decades, to give you the uh, Distinguished Alumnus Award this year for 2018. Oh, well, thank you. This is a great honor honor and a surprise. Uh, I, hope they, I hope I'm not expected to save the paper. <laughs> <laughs> we can hold uh, it up and show, yeah. show the, 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 and so Boy, this is a beautiful, it's in great plate and it says Helen L. Foster, PhD, 1946, Masters, 1943, Bachelor's 1941, Distinguished Alumni Award 2018 from the Department of Earth and Environmental Sciences, the University of Michigan, in recognition, in recognition of fearless leadership and outstanding achievements in the geosciences. Well, it certainly is beautiful and I am very honored and very pleased to accept this wonderful honor.